There is more to Samson's life than what is recorded in the Bible's Book of Judges. For instance, according to rabbinic tradition, Bidan, one of the judges who protected Israel from enemies and who Samuel mentioned in his farewell speech in 1 Samuel 12 verse 11, is connected to Samson. However, the name Bidan is not found in the Book of Judges. Samson's name is derived from the Hebrew word Im, which means son. As a result, Samson carried the name of God, who is characterized in Psalms 84 verse 11 as a son and a shield. During his reign, Samson also kept watch over Israel, judging the people in the same way as God did. According to Tractate Soda of the Talmud, Samson's strength originated from a divine source. Jewish legend states that Samson's shoulders were 60 cubits wide. However, a number of Talmudic remarks note that this shouldn't be taken literally because someone that big couldn't live a normal life in society. Instead, it shows that he was able to support a weight on his shoulders that was 30 meters, or roughly 60 cubits, wide. The hairs on his head sprung up and clashed together so loudly that they could be heard for a corresponding distance, despite the fact that he was lame in both feet. When the Spirit of God fell upon him, he was able to go from Zora to Eshtail in a single stride. Samson was said to be so strong that he could lift two mountains and smash them into two clods of earth, but like Goliath, the possession of such enormous strength brought bad luck. In terms of licentiousness, he was compared to Zimri and Amnon, both of whom were punished for their wrongdoings. Samson's eyesight had become fatigued from following them too closely. He was said to have presided over Israel for 20 years as a judge without ever requesting a single favor from an Israelite. He also allegedly refrained from misusing the name of God. Delilah immediately saw that he was telling the truth when he claimed to be a Nazarite of God. He was unable to lie. Because the Dagon temple collapsed when he tore it down and murdered himself, the Philistines, his family was once more able to find his body after his death and bury him in his father's tomb. Throughout the Talmudic era, there seems to have been some debate about Samson's historical veracity, with many people instead considering him to be a totally mythical figure. This was regarded as heretical by the Talmudic rabbis, who made an effort to refute it. They named Hazel Pony as his mother and said that he had a sister named Nishian or Nashian in numbers, Rabba Naso 10, and Bava Butra 91a. The tale of Samson has also been examined by Christian commentators. The Epistle to the Hebrews, for instance, praises him for his faith. Ambrose depicts Delilah as a Philistine prostitute, following Josephus and Pseudophilo, and advises men to avoid getting married to non-believers so that there won't be dishonesty in place of a spouse's affection. According to Caesarius of Alls, Samson's demise predicted Jesus' crucifixion. Look at the cross that is shown here, he said. Samson stretches out his hands to the two columns and the two beams of the cross. He also likens Delilah to Satan, who tempts Christ. In keeping with this evolution, more contemporary Christian scholars have drawn parallels between Samson's life and that of Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The births of Samson and Jesus were predicted by angels to bring about the salvation of their respective people. Samson was born to a barren woman, whereas Jesus was born to a virgin. Jesus triumphed over Satan, who the first epistle of Peter compares to a roaring lion on the prowl for prey, much as Samson triumphed over a lion. Because each of them received money in silver for their respective actions, Judas Iscariot's betrayal of Jesus and Delilah's betrayal of Samson have been connected. According to Ebenezer Cobham Brewer in his book, A Guide to Scripture History, Samson was blinded, insulted, and imprisoned before he died. While Jesus was humiliated, treated like a slave, and had his eyes covered before being crucified, the Old Testament. Brewer also draws a comparison between Samson's execution amidst the wicked and Christ's crucifixion between two thieves. 
Researchers have described Samson as either an ideal folk hero or a demigod who is entwined with Jewish folklore like Heracles or Enkidu. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, several comparative mythologists thought Samson was a euhemerized solar deity. They asserted that Samson's name derives from the Hebrew word Eim, which means sun, and that his long hair may be a representation of the sun's beams. These astronomers also remarked that the Samson story is roughly situated near Beth Shemesh, a city whose name translates to, Temple of the Sun. They argued that Delilah's name may have been an allusion to the Hebrew word for night, Layla, which subsumes the day. Although infrequently espoused in academic circles, this idea has mostly fallen out of favor due to the lack of supporting data. The idea that Samson is a Hebrew adaptation of the same multi-ethnic Near Eastern folk hero who provided as an influence for the later Greek Heracles and the older Mesopotamian Enkidu, and by extension, his Roman Hercules adaptation, is one that is much more prevalent among researchers today. Heracles, who killed the Nemean lion, and Samson both defeated lions with only their hands. The two of them were also claimed to have once been so thirsty that they tore down a city's gates and drank water that came out of a rock. Women, Delilah for Samson and Diana for Heracles, betrayed them both, ultimately leading them to their separate deaths. Heracles dies on a fire, while Samson brings down the Philistine temple on him and his adversaries. Both heroes, who were protectors of their own nations, pass away at their own hands. In accordance with this interpretation, the announcement of Samson's birth to his mother suppresses God's conception. In addition, Shamgar, another hero mentioned in the Book of Judges, who is credited with killing 600 Philistines with an ox goad in Judges 3 verse 31, was similar to Samson. These assertions are disputed by conventional and orthodox biblical academics who acknowledge Samson as a real historical figure and reject any connections to mythical characters. Samson's status as a solar hero has been seen as an artifice. Because the biblical story is so specific regarding place and time, according to Joan Comey, co-author of Who's Who in the Bible, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament, Samson was definitely a real person who used his incredible strength to fight the oppressors of Israel. The conflict between the Hebrews and the Philistines, in contrast, seemed to James King West to be completely local and personal. Traditional and orthodox biblical scholars who regard Samson as a real historical figure and reject any connections to mythical figures dispute these assertions. It's been said that Samson's status as a solar hero is an artificial invention. Samson was definitely a real person who used his great strength to fight the oppressors of Israel, according to Joan Comey, co-author of Who's Who in the Bible, the Old Testament, the Apocrypha, and the New Testament. This is because the biblical story is so specific about the period and location. But according to James King West, the fight between the Hebrews and the Philistines seems to be of a completely local and personal origin. In the Book of Judges, it is stated that Samson lived during a time of continual hostilities between Israel and Philistia, a time when God was punishing the Israelites by giving them up to the Philistines. Manoah's wife, a Danite from Zorah and an Israelite, had been unable to get pregnant. A boy who will soon be born to the couple will begin rescuing the Israelites from the Philistines, the Lord's angel appears to Manoah's wife. According to the angel of the Lord, Manoah's wife was required to refrain from all alcoholic beverages, unclean meals, and her promised child was not to shave or cut his hair. He would be brought up as a Nazarite. In ancient Israel, the Nazarite vow, which had numerous requirements like abstaining from alcohol and cutting or shaving one's hair, was available to anybody who wanted to devote oneself to God more intensely for a length of time. Because his wife, who was not present, trusts the Lord's angel, Manoah begs God to send the messenger once more to give them guidance on how to raise the unborn boy. When the angel of the Lord returns, Manoah asks him his name, to which he responds, You asked me my name, why? It is not understandable. 
The Lord's angel then prohibits offering a sacrifice to anybody other than God as Manoah is about to do so. When he touches it with his staff, it strangely catches fire, and he soars into the air amid the flames. Because this is such stunning evidence of the character of the messenger, Manoah is terrified for his life because it was formerly thought that no one could live after meeting God. But his wife convinces him that God would never have told them such things if he had intended to murder them. When the time is right, their son Samson is born, and they raise him in accordance with the angel's guidance. Thank you for watching.